Hi, I'm Stubanta and we are currently at the Kalabhoda Arts Festival 2021. So this time round, what we decided was we are going to unlock some facets of arts. And today with me, I'm going to unlock some secrets from the kitchen. So let's begin. You know what? First of all, when it comes to cooking for my family, I do not like to compromise on quality at any cost. And that is why what I do is I use ingredients from Star Bazaar. So the ingredients, so Star Bazaar has this brand called Papsta, which is a Tata food and beverages brand, which is available only at Star Bazaar. And these products are really fabulous. Well, you know, it's the Tata name, so they don't compromise with quality or any of that. And rest assured, the taste and the flavors are also bang on. So what has happened today is, the Star Bazaar guys have been very nice and they've sent me a, an amazing hamper, which is here and it's too big for me to put on this table right now. So I'm going to be using their products for each of my recipes. I'm going to begin right now with a pasta salad for which I have used the fat star macaroni and the fat star fusilli. I tend to use these pastas because they're really nice, they hold shape and they cook perfectly. So what I've done is I have cooked some earlier on and kept so that you know I don't waste time boiling it. Uh, so this is the cooked pasta. I've just mixed both of those, one cup of each and I have boiled them and so my pasta is ready. Now for this salad, I'm going to need a few ingredients and mind you, all the ingredients are from pasta. I'm going to need some mayo. I'm going to need some ketchup. Then I'm going to need some vegetables. So these are carrots, which I have boiled and I have cut them into cubes. Then this is some sweet corn which I have also boiled and kept aside. We don't really want to waste time now, do we? This is some grated cheese. This is a herb mix. Some mustard. And some parsley. So, uh, I'm also going to be using some bell peppers and a carrot. I thought I'll chop it on screen because that's not so hard. So, once I've boiled my pasta, what I've done is, I've just drained it, drizzled some oil on it, and I have put it in this big bowl in which I'm going to finally mix the salad. I don't like doing too many utensils, so, well. So, here goes. This is my cucumber. Just remember when you're cutting the vegetables, cut them into chunks because they give a nice bite to your uh, to the pasta salad. You know, when I was younger, I did not like salads at all. Not one bit, trust me. So my mom came up with this recipe and well, this is how she used to make me eat salads because I love pasta. We all do, don't we? And it's very, very easy to make. You, if you are kids watching this, please get some parental supervision or make sure an older person is around when you're chopping the vegetables. Otherwise, the rest you can just do by yourself. So this is a yellow bell pepper. I like to add some color. I'm just going to be chopping this into cubes as well. There. I've just taken a little bit because I want to taste the pasta in the salad. It's really good pasta. So I suggest the next time you are looking for good pasta, you head to Star Bazaar and get yourself the Fabsa range of pastas. So they have macaroni, they have fusilli, they have penne. I haven't used penne today, but I've used the macaroni and fusilli. There. So my vegetables are chopped. 
So I'm just going to move the chopping board aside for a bit. Oh yeah, you're also going to need some salt and pepper. Into this, from my secret compartment, I'm going to take a spoon, add some of the sweet corn. This is about a cup that I have boiled. I'm going to be using a bit of it. I'm going to use all the carrot. Carrot is very good for you, full of vitamin A. Helps build immunity. Okay, so these are my vegetables done. I'm going to very delicately, because remember, this is cooked pasta. So very delicately, I don't want it to break. It doesn't, but still. I'm going to just mix it up with the vegetables. that's done it looks so amazingly colorful doesn't it see and your parents can't tell you please don't eat pasta all the time you can always say this is really healthy now i'm going to take a mixing bowl and i'm going to make the sauce for the pasta again i'm taking the pasta creamy eggless mayo it tastes really good even though it's eggless i'm going to use about two tablespoons of this See, can you see how creamy it is? Once I put it in the bowl, I will just show it to you. That's the meal. Just gonna keep that aside as well. Just look at the texture, it's really nice and creamy. Now to this, I'm going to use the sun-kissed tomato ketchup also from Fabsta. Now, I'm not going to put too much of the ketchup, just about a couple of teaspoons here. Then I'm going to add a teaspoon of mustard. Just a tad, because I want that nice acidic zinc to it. Just a tad. Then I'm going to add, so these are mixed herbs, which, uh, you know, you can... Either dry your own herbs and then mix them and lose them, or you get them pre-packed so you could use those as well. Oh, and all these products, other than the Fabstar products, also are available at Star Bazaar. So make sure you head there the next time. So I'm just going to add a couple of inches of that. I am going to season it with a bit of salt and pepper. Please remember to add salt to your water when you're boiling the pasta. And I'm going to give this a nice mix. Hold it up. So can you see the sauce? It's a nice, thick, creamy sauce. Okay. I'm just going to get my bowl here. And I'm going to generously pour this. I'm going to take all of it. It's so good I don't want to waste it. I'm just going to pour all of the sauce into it. And then, again, very slowly with light hands, please remember, I am going to mix this. I'm going to mix the sauce in with the pasta. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you cover all the pasta and the vegetables with the sauce. Because if you remember, we haven't seasoned our vegetables. And uh, yeah. Oh, also very important. Remember, when you put cucumber in a salad, you need to season it before you serve it. Just before that. Because if you add uh, salt to uh, cucumber before you kind of happen to serve it, it tends to leave a lot of water and so you'll get a soggy salad which you don't want so be a little patient with it show some love and mix the pasta right so my pasta looks nice and creamy here 
I'm gonna add some more awesome ingredients to it. So I'm gonna add some cheese because I love cheese. Who doesn't love cheese? I'm just I've just grated some cheese and I'm just gonna kind of spread it all over. Oh, did you know that mice actually don't like cheese? It's almost like my entire childhood was a lie. I always believed they like cheese, but apparently not. So you can't load them with cheese. Anyway, I've added the cheese and I'm going to add some chopped parsley. Just a tad. Then I want a nice green. It's a salad, no? So there has to be some greens happening around here. So, there we go. Again, give it one quick mix. And there, the pasta salad is ready. Oops, I'm just going to wipe my hands. And I'm going to serve it. So I have this really pretty pasta plate and the stray corn, which I'm again going to toss aside. I'm going to put a generous portion of the pasta onto the plate. Make sure you get the vegetables also, okay? I don't leave the vegetables behind for your folks to eat. There. And I'm going to just garnish it with a little bit of parsley. So there you go. Ready. Pasta salad in real time. Really fast. Done. So what are we going to do next? So okay. You know what? It, summers are here. And it's getting really really hot. And you can't be having tea and coffee all the time and anyway I'm sure most of you are not allowed to have tea and coffee. So let's make a yummy milkshake. So Pabstar actually they have this amazing strawberry crush okay. They're as good as the real strawberry and uh, they're full of the strawberry flavor. They're nice and rich. So you could use them as a topping for ice creams and stuff but uh, I thought you know Let's give it a twist and make something, make a yummy smoothie out of it. Again, healthy, actually healthy, no quotes. So what I'm going to do is I have with me a tall glass because you have to pour the smoothie in it. And I have some homemade yogurt and I have a banana. Oh, actually, uh, Star Bazaar does have a whole range of fruits, okay? Exotic, regular fruits, good stuff. I quite like it. In fact, when I used to stay in Andheri, Star Bazaar used to be like my second home. Oh, okay, my mixer is heavy. Star Bazaar used to be like my second home. So every week or so, I used to make sure I went there and stocked up on my groceries. I like buying groceries for the week. So, anyway, so let's get on with the smoothie. It's Really, really simple. I'm going to take the yogurt and add about a cup of yogurt to my mixer here. Now, I'm going to take the strawberry crush. Actually, I'm going to shake it a bit. It tends to settle at the bottom. I'm going to add a generous amount. I'm adding about three big tablespoons of it. You'll see that once, you know, you see the color, it's very really pretty. Then I'm going to add half a banana to it. Just half. So I'm going to use my hands and break it up. Actually, I'm going to add a little more than half. There. One to good luck. And I'm going to put in some ice from this very fancy ice pot that I have. Okay. 
This will put about three to four cubes. That's it. Now we're going to get on with our mixer. Now what I'm going to do is I am just going to pulse it twice. So pulse is the setting you have right at the beginning, right next to the off button. So I'm just going to pulse it a couple of times. And now I am going to go completely bozo on it. this has all the goodness of a regular milkshake plus it's got tons of yogurt which is brilliant it's good for you it's full of probiotics and i'm going to add this into the glass if you have some chunks of fruit that's just okay it's super fun once you're done with your drink to kind of go in with a spoon and eat the fruit so can you see the color so this this is actually the color you get when you use real strawberries to make a smoothie. But we can't get strawberries all year round and I like strawberries. So I tend to use the Fapsa Crush. That's done. We're done with our second recipe. What do you think we should make for our third recipe? So we have a smoothie. We are done with our salad. So we're good for dinner. We're good for tea time. So let's make a tea time snack. What's it? We will do that in. I'm just going to put this aside. And I'm going to keep this smoothie so once I'm done with this, I can have it. Alrighty. Now, once again, I love that box. Right? It's like a mini pitara full of good stuff. Greens. and they have nachos i love nachos they have a cheese flavor and they have a jalapeno mm, let me see what am i going to work with today i think i'll do a mix a little bit of a mix of both the nachos man right? you can't stop eating them so i'm going to take this plate here and i want a good amount of nachos and i'm just going to Put the nachos. So this is a huge packet and it is quite full with the nachos. Yeah, can you hear it? I'm just gonna take a couple of handfuls and so this is a, this is a cheese nacho, okay? Add the cheese nacho on. Then these are the jalapeno nachos. It's good to have a little spice in life. Always. In go the jalapeno nachos. See now, this is a recipe again that you can put together when there's no one at home. You just need to ask somebody to chop some vegetables and keep aside for you. Maybe in the refrigerator, in you know, airtight containers. So the refrigerator doesn't stay. Okay, that's my nachos done. Now see, here's the thing. I like to mix flavors. And since nachos are Mexican, I thought, why not give it a bit of an Asian twist, Asian Indian, more towards Indian. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a very, very special sauce to top the nachos. I have with me here some baked beans in tomato sauce. 
you can easily make them at home you just need to soak the beans in some water overnight and then boil it the next morning you, these are white beans white kidney beans you need to boil them the next morning in a bit of water it's a lot of water actually for about 15 to 20 minutes with a bit of salt and then uh, what you can do is you can use the fat star tomato ketchup and make like a sauce out of it basically just warm it up a little bit and toss your beans in it and voila use a little bit of the sauce if you want a bit of a soupy consistency i mean uh, a bit of a water from the beans sorry not the sauce and yeah so there you have it your homemade kidney beans and you can store these for a while you store these in an airtight container in your refrigerator and they stay easily for about a month or so so that's breakfast sorted for a month i'm sure your mom is going to be happy after this session and so are you okay i have my baby i have my baked beans into this once again yes i'm going to clean my hands I am going to take the sun-kissed tomato ketchup. I really like the name, you know, sun-kissed. Actually, the color kind of says it all. It looks sun-kissed. And I am going to add a teeny tiny bit of salt, not too much, just a little bit. And I'm going to add some pepper. Since we are Indianizing it, we are going to go in with some chaat masala. Couple of pinches. Then, you know, once I was browsing through on one of my haunts to Star Bazaar to pick up my kursi, I came across this hot chili and garlic shezwan sauce. Now, uh, Although I like making my own sauces and spreads and jams and all of that, uh, I said, why not give it a try? Because somehow I never really got my Shezwan sauce right the way I wanted it. So I was not very happy. So I said, okay, you know, Fabstra, I trust the brand. The products are really good. They're flavorsome, they're tasty. So why don't I just give it a shot and, you know, try and use it. And trust me, it smells like the real thing and it is the real thing. It is the real thing, so obviously it smells like it. And yeah, so I am going to use this amazing Shezwan sauce today. I use it to dress my noodles, I use it to, you know, sometimes I also use it to marinate meats or paneer or tofu. And it's brilliant. And perfect with your momos. Okay, anyway, so I am going to use... Uh, because I want to add some spice to this, I'm going to use the Shezwan sauce. It's perfect. I'm going to use a fairly generous teaspoon of it. And I'm going to mix this. So this is slightly different from the regular, you know, your regular nachos and beans and cheese. And it's really quick to make, so perfect for an evening snack to go with your smoothie. There. That is mixed. Can you see it? It looks nice and red and lovely, speckled with that little white. I'm going to get my bowl with the nachos and I'm going to spread this. I'm going to be a little generous with the sauce, uh, especially if you're serving it immediately, be a little generous. It always helps to be generous with food. Okay. Try and get some of the saucy stuff in it. So I've topped it with the sauce, spread it all over. I'm going to leave that to the side. Then I have some nice chopped tomatoes here, nice and fresh, freshly chopped. See, this is the part where you're going to need a little bit of help. 
I'm going to just add the tomatoes on this. Spread it out. Cool. Then I'm going to add some onions. I'm going to add the onions. I'm adding some to my table as you can see. Try and avoid that. Then to Indianize it a little further, I am going to top it with some tamarind juice. Not tamarind juice, actually it's tamarind chutney. It's very easy to make. Just take some tamarind paste, add some water, some jaggery, some salt and some jeera powder if you like and just pour it all over makes nice and chakpata again our old friend the chaat masala a little bit Just remember we haven't seasoned our vegetables add the chaat masala now i am going to do a true indo mexican fusion so i've taken this bowl here because I want to top it with something nice and white and cheesy. So I'm going to take some cream cheese and some yogurt. I'm going to add the cream cheese to this bowl. Please make sure your cream cheese is at room temperature or else it's going to be really, really hard to mix. I'm just going to add the cream cheese. Comes out of this. Then I am going to, this is about two tablespoons of cream cheese. To this, I am going to add a tablespoon and a half of the heat or yogurt because I want the sauce to be nice and creamy, right? And I'm going to use my little whisk here, cute little whisk. I'm going to whisk it together till it is nice and smooth. Shouldn't take too long, but just make sure you don't have lumps. And that is why it is very important to make sure your cream cheese is at room temperature. But you know, I used to have a really weird dog growing up. As in, I had a lot of dogs when I was growing up. But this one, for some reason, didn't like cheese. But he liked cream cheese very surprising anyway I miss him I'm gonna get it as smooth as I can just going to take some elbow grease really here's the thing with food at times you need to be a little patient with it and show lots of love while you cook Done. I'm going to take another spoon of bigger one actually. Got a nice dollop of it on my nachos. What is left of the sauce? You can actually add it to a sandwich, put some chutney on one side, add some cucumbers, tomatoes and make yourself a yummy sandwich later. This also can be stored in an airtight container in your refrigerator for about four to five days. So there we have it. My nachos are ready. I'm going to make them look pretty with a nice sprinkling of coriander. So remember when you're sprinkling leaves and stuff like that, uh, try and sprinkle it from a height so that it spreads it does spread on the table around also, like I spread it, but that you can clean up. And you know, that spreads and it looks really nice when it falls on the food and when you present the food. So, there you go, your evening snack to accompany your glass of smoothie 
which I still have here. So that's strawberry and nachos. Perfect putty there. Okay. Just going to put that back. And let's see. So we've covered tea time. We've covered a lovely smoothie, which is a good substitute for tea. Oh, by the way, Fabstra also has this amazing tea and roast coffee. Their coffee particularly, because I'm a coffee drinker, their uh, coffee is an amazing roast ground coffee. And it really wakes me up in the morning and that's something I really, really need. So make sure to ask your parents to check out, you know, their coffee section. All right. Okay, okay. So what do we do next? First, we shall clean our counter. Try and keep your counter as clean as you can when you're cooking. Because, you know, if, if there's a mess on your counter, then it's going to get all messed up in your head. So try and just keep it nice and clean. As clean as possible. Of course, once you're done, you can clean up. All right. So, what do you say? Let's do some cookies for breakfast. I know it's not normal that, you know, so your parents are raising an eyebrow saying, cookies for breakfast, really now. Yeah, but why not? <coughs> so, uh, I have a fat stuff muesli here. It's fruit and nut because it's got fruit and it's got nuts. So it's got papayas, it's got almonds, it's got raisins, it's got some strawberry, uh, it's got wheat flakes and it's got oats. So instead of having a bowl of cereal, you can always convince your folks or you can do this yourself actually and make a big bowl of, uh, not a bowl, but make like tons of these cookies. You can store them in an airtight jar and you can have them for almost a week, week and a half. And there's a perfect breakfast for dinner kind of dessert. So this is really amazing. What I'm going to do here is... I'm going to take my mixer and I like the fact it's so colorful, no? nice and pink and yellow and blue. Nice looking packet. I am just going to. Oh, this smells really nice. I'm going to add the muesli to the jar. I'm adding about two cups of the muesli mix. So what happens with this is you don't additionally need to add any nuts, you know, because it's already got nuts. I can show you. This is what the muesli looks like inside. It's got nuts, it's got fruits, and it's got oats, it's got wheat flakes. Really yummy bunch of stuff. Anyway, and I'm going to coarsely grind this so I can mix it into a yummy cookie. And I said breakfast, so we're going to use ingredients we have for breakfast. I'm going to get my trusted mixer back once again. There we have it. This again. I like the pulse setting because you know it kind of gives me an idea of what is happening inside. I am going to pulse it for a bit and then depending on how coarse I want it, I am going to carry on with that. That's the sound of all the good yummy things being crushed. So, like I said, I'm going to coarsely uh, grind it and this is what my coarsely ground muesli looks like. You don't need to worry if you know you have these bits of fruits and stuff hanging around. 
it's perfectly fine in fact it's nice because when you're eating the cookie you kind of get a nice bite and yeah well a little surprise in every cookie is good no then i am going to be taking a mixing bowl and i'm going to add Usually mixed to it. There. This is about two cups, and this should make about six to seven cookies. If you, if you like, like me, if you like big and chunky cookies, then about six to seven. If you want to make smaller cookies, so if you want to make smaller cookies, I think you can easily make about ten to twelve cookies with this. Anyway, so. This is my muesli. I'm going to take out few spoons here. So I'm going to need a couple of spoons. And I'm going to need some honey. Some taco spread. This is a chocolate and hazelnut spread. It's amazing. You can just you know just drop it on crackers and have it, and it's really really yum. It's a favorite dessert. And then you have the Fab Star mixed fruit jam, and of course we have peanut butter. So now the uh, Fab Star has two kinds of peanut butter. They have a creamy and they have a crunchy. For this recipe, because I've already added the muesli and you know it's got the fruit bits and the nuts and all of that. I think I'm going to go with a smooth peanut butter. It's just it'll just help bind it all together. Okay. Oh wow! Just look at how when they say creamy, they mean creamy. So I'm going to take two big spoons of this. There we go. Just going to take a teeny tiny bit. I'm not going to put the spoon to wash yet because I'm going to make it once I'm done with this. Then I am going to use the chocolate. See, I have all these products in my house, but you know, since they send me a nice goodie basket, and I like goodie baskets, and I wanted to show you how amazingly silky the textures are. So I thought, you know, why not unveil new products for you, only for you? I'm gonna add a big spoon of the choco hazelnut spread. I'm gonna add a little more. Again, so you can clearly see. I just can't have enough of peanut butter and the chocolate spread. Then I am going to add a little drizzle of honey. Okay. Yummy, nice golden honey. Just a teeny bit. And I'm going to add the mixed fruit jam. Oh, if I get the bottle open. Amazing. I'm going to need some help with getting this bottle. So I've given it there. Oh, amazing. I'm going to 
add that as well. This is all almost like a peanut butter and jam and chocolate in a bowl, no? I mean, imagine if you woke up to things like this in the morning, you would look forward to waking up now, wouldn't you? I do. Again, I'm adding a couple of spoons of the jam. And it is going to get a bit messy because I'm going to go, I'm going to go in with my hands. Once that is done, I am going to first try and mix it using a spoon. Just kind of, you know, break up the lumps. I don't want to waste even a teeny tiny bit of it. So, I'm going with my hands. Make sure you get all of it off the spoon. Nice and messy sometimes. The texture feels so nice, nice and sandy. You don't need to add any, you know, uh, butter or oil or milk to these cookies. Of course, you can have the cookies with your milk. Classic milk and cookies kind of breakfast, whatever midday meal. Just going to mix them so it forms a nice bowl. I needed a stick so that my cookies can be roughly shaped. That is what my cookie dough looks like. It's actually, you know, it's just, it's edible just the way it is. But I promised you a cookie and I'm going to give you a cookie. I'm just going to wipe my hands. Now, I am going to prep my oven tray. This is a fairly large oven tray. Uh, now, see, the thing with the oven is, whenever you're baking something, this is not specific to the cookies, but this is specific to anything that you bake, be it, you know, a casserole, be it, a, you know, bowls, mac and cheese or cakes or whatever it is that you're baking. Always, always, always remember to preheat your oven. What preheating does is when you put a uh, preheating meaning you start heating your oven before you put whatever it is that you want to into the oven. What preheating does is it regulates the overall temperature of the oven. So in that case, once let's say you're putting in the cookies, you won't get like half cooked cookies in the front or at the back or something like that. All your cookies will cook evenly. So always, always remember, do not compromise on your preheating time. Make sure your oven preheats at the temperature that whatever your baking needs to bake at. So for example, I'm going to bake the cookies at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes. So I would preheat my oven for at, at 200 degrees for at least 10 minutes okay and i'm going to line this tray with some butter paper now again what i like doing here 
is I like to reuse the butter paper as much as possible. A little stingy like that. The more than being stingy actually, I think it's very important that you should save paper as much as you can. Well, I haven't really been a fabulous example of it right now. But as much as you can. So, I'm going to reuse this butter paper maybe later. I like to fold it and tuck it in. So that stays on my oven. Once that is done, I'm going to add a teeny tiny bit of vegetable oil onto it. And I'm going to spread it. Just a tad. You can use your hands to spread it because the advantage is once uh, you want to roll the cookies, they won't stick to your hand. So here we go. My oven tray is prepped. Now I am going to roll my cookies. One last one. I'm going to take a big chunk. Like I said, I like my cookies to be nice and thick and chunky. Now because there is some oil on my hands, the cookie dough is not sticking to my hands. So, there we go. It's nice and big and chunky. Now when I place the cookies, I'm going to make sure that uh, there is a bit of a distance between the two cookies, at least, you know, about a couple of inches because, um, because of the peanut butter and uh, primarily the peanut butter actually. Because of the peanut butter, the cookies tend to kind of expand when they cook. So, uh, you don't want them sticking together to one another. So, you have to keep that little bit of a distance, but two inches should be fine. So I think I'm going to get around six to seven cookies out of these. You can shape them into any shape you want. I like them round because, you know, it's easy. And I can't really wait to have these cookies once they're done. And they're easier to store also. last two cookies are going to be really small. I'm going to share those. There, my cookie bowl is clean. I am done. You look really nice. Huh? So I have two choco cookies and I have six big ones. I think I'm sorted for breakfast for about three to four days now. Anyway, so these cookies I would ideally bake immediately or you know, you can let them rest for an hour or so. Bake them in a preheated oven for uh, 20 minutes at 200 degrees. Make sure when you're handling the oven, you have an older person with you, your elder sister or your parents or just make sure you have an adult around because you don't want to be scalding your hands or in the oven. And the oven can get really hot because it's 200 degrees of heat, so it can be really hot. So, uh, just make sure you have somebody supervising you when you're doing this. Or if you can get somebody to do it for you, why not? You might as well. So, um, I will put these cookies in an oven, like I mentioned, preheated. I cannot mention that enough. For 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, when they are out of the oven, you need to cool them. 
because the cookies uh, okay sorry i'm drooling even looking at them so the cookies are uh, they are, they kind of have a nice and soft center and they need some time to set so when you get it out of the heat uh, don't try and take it out don't try and you know take it off the paper immediately uh, <coughs> sorry because that will lead to the cookie breaking you don't want that so just leave it out for about 15 to 20 minutes till it cools down or comes down to room temperature and then you can very easily take it off the butter paper but in the interest of time and because i had all the ingredients from star bazaar ta da i have baked the cookies i have baked one batch so i get like okay now i'm really sorted for a week of breakfast so this is what the final cookies look like i'm so sorry about my hands they're really messy and uh when you break into it the nice and crunchy on the outside you can see the fruits you can see the chocolate and all that it smells really good i wish you could smell it but so yeah so these are my cookies they're really really soft inside you know they like they literally melt in your mouth they're nice and crumbly and amazing so they're perfect for breakfast i'm going to move this aside so these were these are the cookies these were the yummy nachos for your tea time this is the smoothie to go with it oh you can actually also have the smoothie and the cookies and this is the pasta so once again guys thank you so much i am subanta and i have had a ball cooking for you So thank you so much. I hope you make these recipes. I hope you like them. And uh, if you could, you know, make these recipes, share them with your family, and have a good time. This is uh, once again. Thank you for joining us at the Kalabhura Art Festival. You should go and check out the rest of the uh, shows lined up till the 14th of February because they are really, really interesting. And I'm sure you'll have a good time watching those shows. And uh, of course, a big, big thank you to Star Bazaar for having sent me an amazing goodie bag, which I'm going to enjoy for a while. And uh, go on, go to Star Bazaar, get your groceries. They have some really, really nice products there. And once again, this is Tubanta saying bye from KGF. Thank you.